The Coliseum is already jam-packed with fans in order to start the show, but the lights haven't gone out yet to start. The entirety of PWC roster surrounds the ring with Loon and Billy Ray Diggler, the PWC and PWC World Ladies Champion, on the ringside alongside both GMs, Anna's mother, Joshi Wrestling, legend Kyoko Kimura, Gulia, Siori, Shad Gaspar's best friend and fellow wrestler GTG, wife Siliana and his son Aria are all front row in the crowd. Tyson Kidd takes the mic. Tonight's show promised to be the one of the emotional, heaviest shows I have ever witnessed since becoming the GM of this company. A legendary, revolutionary 30-year career comes to an end as arguably the greatest wrestler of all time, The Undertaker. Rides off into the sunset, passing the torch to its son, Erebus. Thank you, Taker. Thank you, Taker. Erebus. But more than witnessing the end of a one-of-a-kind trajectory, we are here tonight in celebrating in the celebration of the life, career and legacy of two of the most appreciated wrestlers in the business. This past Thursday, 19, it has been two years since Shad Gasport passed away in auric fashion. Thank you, Shad. Thank you, Shad. This past Monday, 23rd, it has also been two years since Anna Kimura departed his world. Thank you, Anna. Thank you, Anna. Anna Kimura. Anna Kimura. It is thus with the great honor and pride that we are here celebrating the Shad Gasport and Hana Kimura Memorial Mount, and particularly it is with great honor that we are dedicating tonight's show entirely to their memories and legacies. We also want to extend our thanks to Shad's wife, Siliana, and his son, Aria, and his best friend and crime time partner, yeah, GTG. To fellow wrestlers and great fans of PWC, Gillian Suri, and of course to Anna's mother, the Joshi wrestling legend Kyoko Kimura, for being here tonight with us. I had the most honor and privilege to have worked with Shad while we were both in WWE. You know what they said? Don't judge a book for its cover? Sure. He had the menacing attitude and an intimidating psyche. But beneath that I found there was the biggest hurt heart ever. You were always willing to lend a hand to your fellow workers and the fact that you sacrificed yourself so that Arya could be here front row. Remembering you yeah, tells everything one needs to know about you. The wrestling world loves you and misses you deeply, but we won't ever forget what time it is. Crime time. Yeah. I'm passing the torch to Trish Stratus. Now I usually would have a lot of things to say about how great Anna Kimura was, but it is so happens that I didn't know her as well as her mother and Gule and Suri did. So I invited the three of them to attend this special edition tonight and I would like them to come down to this ring. Yulia, seeing how your English has improved, maybe you can say a few words about Hannah for us. Yulia, Suri and Kyoko enter the ring as chants of Shadga sport Anna and Kimura keep going on. He wrote spontaneously from the crowd, Kyoko is moving to tears. You know, ever since I first appeared here in PWC as a mayor fan sitting right there, front row at Survival Instinct, Tyson and Trish came to me and to Siori and said they wanted to prepare a couple of tributes to Anna over the course of the next few months and they wanted us to help them with those matters. And I just couldn't say no. I feel like we needed to help because this role didn't do well enough to save Anna from an unwanted end. And I only shared the locker room with her for about six months, but I saw things in Hannah that I didn't see in any other wrestler, Joshi or European. Because many of you didn't know, you don't know this, but there is a reason why she was called the Dangerous Flower. Inside this ring, she was the baddest lad one could ever go against. 
But when the bell rang to bring the match to an end, she was... <laughs> she was the sweetest, most funny, loving... Yuli and Surya and Kyoko are crying here as the crowd stands up and applauds. What a sign of respect. She was the sweetest and the most fun-loving individual you could share your life with. And Sierra, Kyoko and I are so honored to be here today, paying tribute to her. Let this be a warning to everyone. Love Mobius source, a vehicle of joy, but most importantly, value life and stop the hate. You don't know what the person is going through and you don't know when it's gonna be the last time you see him or her. You don't know what you have until it's gone. R.I.P. to Anna, R.I.P. Shed. You guys did amazingly well. We love you and we miss you. The crowd applauds and everyone in the ring and at ringside cries as picture of Anne and Shed are displaying on the screen. Just to wrap this up, I have an announcement to make. Now Tyson is speaking. After a good couple of months talking to Miss Kimura and Siliana, and with the permission of Anne and Shad's family, we have decided to perpetually name the men and women Starway to Heaven Rumble matches that will take place on the eponymous pay-per-view on July the 7th after Shad gets sport in Hana Kimura. Yeah. Thus, the Men's Starway to Heaven Rumble match will now be Shad Gaspar Starway to Heaven Rumble match and the Women's Starway to Heaven Rumble match will now be Anna Kimura Starway to Heaven Rumble match. Yeah. Other tributes are set in motion and will be announced over the course of the next months. Thank you so much. Arigato gozaimuzu. Enjoy the show everyone. Now the crowd is giving applauses and Anna Kimura Shad Gaspar chances here. Anna Kimura Shad Gaspar. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to PWC, and tonight we have a very special edition for you, because it is Shad Gaspar and Hannah Kimura Memorial Edition tonight. And not only that, but tonight it is the go-home show for Ignition. We are just one week away from the pay-per-view itself. Billy Ray Diggler is coming back tonight from his injury, and Taker, yes, the Undertaker is going to have his last professional wrestling match ever against none other than Sting. Well, but that's later tonight on the main event. Now let's go back to the ringside. Action may take place. Join 
absolutely no pity right now. Uh-oh. Here we go. Here we go. Oh, my. Wolf comes up big there. No kidding. Wolf showing absolutely no pity right now. He's bringing it back inside the ring now. I can't blame him. Keep it in the ring. Oh, wait. Nice reversal. There's the clothesline. Hello Tyson, Mr. Kennedy, what are you doing here? I thought I had fired you, do you remember about that? During the second season, after that talk show that was huh, a blast, when you were talking disrespectful things towards several wrestlers, do you remember about that, the reason why I fired you? Yeah, yeah Tyson, I remember, but actually I'm not here to compete again, okay? I'm not asking you. I'm not asking for a new contract, actually. I came down here to warn you. To warn you, don't you ever try to sign my sister again, okay? I don't want her to be here. I don't want her to be nowhere around this company. I'm warning you, Tyson. Don't even try again. I'm warning you. Your sister? What are you talking about, Kennedy? I didn't even know you have a sister. <laughs> I'm talking about Lola, okay? I know you tried to sign her. L L L Lola? <laughs> what the? Lola told me that she was, she was MVP's sister, not your sister. What? Yeah, if you don't believe me, then go watch, go watch our PWC's edition of last week. Go watch that edition and then talk to me. MVP is her sister, that's what she said to me. Now you're telling me you're her brother? Everything is going wrong here, what's going on here? There is a misunderstanding here, there has to be. I don't, I'm not understanding. I'm not understanding why you're trying to tell me MVP is, is Lola's brother? There is something wrong here and I want to know what's going on on this company, Tyson. Oh well, I mean... Mr. Kennedy, it feels like now AR2 wants to know what's going on here, because I don't know what's going on here. All I know is that Lola told me that MVP didn't want her in this company. And now you're telling me that you don't want Lola in this company, and that you're actually Lola's brother? So are you Lola's brother, or is it MVP? Who is lying here? <laughs> He's simply reminding him that he's here. Now that's how you make a statement. To think, I almost wrote him off earlier. He's close to being done here. Sent into the corner. Few superstars are as dominant as this guy. Gets him with a reversal. And a scoop slam. He 
he can pin his opponent right here. The cover, and this one's history. What a win. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to PwC. I'm here on backstage with Adam Andrews. And Adam, at ignition, you're going to step foot in the ring with a former partner of yours from New Vein, Jason Kennedy. Now, I got to ask you, Adam, how do you feel about that by knowing that you're going to face a former partner of yours? Well, just like you said, he's a former partner, not the current. Now I'm following a singles path career. And it happens to be that we don't work for Flair anymore. There is no more new vein. Now all of us work for Tyson Kidd. And if Tyson tells us to do something, we just have to do it. So at Ignition, I gotta tell you, it is exclusively business. There is nothing personal between me and Jason Kennedy. Actually, I wish him the best luck here in PwC's future. But at Ignition, well, if Tyson Kidd says so, we just have to do it. It's all about business. All right, thank you, Adam. Now let's go back to the ringside. Oh, I'm shot. Oh, and a punch to the face by Roddy. These guys are going a little strong style here. I hit that. I hit that so clearly. How was that not counted? And advantage Roddy right here. If Roddy can win this non title match, he could get a television title shot. He knows that. That's why he did what he did by jumping start of the match. Roddy lands on his feet. Oh, and drives him into the apron. Once again, that trauma to the back. Okay, Cesaro. Worst for wear here. It's gonna be oh cloud nine slam oh ladies and gentlemen please welcome at this time jose who is in the middle of the ring preparing to make an in-ring interview with the return of billy ray diggler let's go back to the ring right now ladies and gentlemen please welcome at this time the return of our PwC World's Heavyweight Champion, Billy Ray Diggler. Now, Billy Ray, everybody knows that next week, right here in this ring, finally you're going to step foot in the ring against a former tag team partner of yours and friend of yours, Bruce Bannister for the world title, PwC's Ignition Pay-Per-View. Give us some updates about that match. What are you expecting from Bruce next week? Well, actually, I know Bruce very well. Just like you said, we were friends in the past. Back in the day, we were really good tag team partners too. But somehow, someway, everything broke down to this. Bruce Bannister thinks I have the fault for every single... And here it comes Bruce Bannister. He's interrupting his interview. Actually, the interview never really started. What a lack of disrespect by Bruce Bannister. Ga, 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 ga. Too much blah 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 coming down from your little mouth, Billy Ray, but let me tell you this. Nobody really wants to hear you talking about what is going to happen next week at Ignition. I don't care, and these people shouldn't care either. Because it, it is really easy to predict what is going to happen next week. But if you don't know, I'm going to tell you right down, straight to your face. Next week, these people are going to witness a new world champion. A second time world champion in this company. Whatever you like it or not. And you're just going to have to deal with it. Now what I just cannot seem to understand Billy Ray. Is why did you took so much time to come back. Like I don't really get it. Because it feels like it is either one or two. One, the injury got so hard on you. Number two, you just cannot deal with the fact that next week. I'm going to become the next world champion. So in my way, I can see that it is the second option. You don't want to lose that belt. And I kind of get it because I already was there in the past. I already was a world champion back in the day. But you have to understand you're not a rightful champion. 
First of all, Bruce Bannister, I'm going to ask you to lower your voice tone because you're talking in the presence of the world champion. Low, low your voice tone right now. Second of all, Tyson Kidd has already told you, I had an injury. That's the reason why I got out from this company for a couple of weeks. There was nothing else happening there. And actually, I was not supposed to come back tonight. I was supposed to come out at Ignition, but it happened to be that my injury got healed faster than I expected. Oh, I feel so much calmer right now, Billy Ray. Are you trying to make me happy by knowing that you have come back earlier? <laughs> you're talking, Billy Ray, like you're a big match of a deal. Like you're a big deal. But I have to tell you, the only reason why you're the world champion, that's not on me. That's because of me. You're like a world champion that is living under other people's costs. That happened to be me. Let me remind you what happened. What happened was that Tyson Kidd didn't expect me. He didn't expect me to take much time off of this company. Because I went out of this company for 16 weeks. 16 weeks to heal my injury back in the day. And you're coming down here like your injury was a big deal. You only was out of this company for 3 or 4 weeks. Can you compare that to 16 weeks? And what happened was, since I took so much time to come back, Tyson Kidd decided to give the opportunity to the second contender, which was you. So, he was not expecting me to come back two weeks after that. But I was supposed to be the number one contender. At Kill or Be Kill pay-per-view, it was supposed to be me and Strowman only. You weren't supposed to be there in the mix. So the reason why you're the world champion, that's all on me. You weren't even supposed to be at Kill or Be Killed. You're nothing more than a fluke. A fluke, a fraud. A fraud that sooner or later at Ignition, I'm gonna turn down. So for you to see, Billy Ray, since I came back to this company, I was waiting all alone for my one-on-one -on -one championship match. Somehow, someway, it never happened. It was supposed to happen at Kill or Be Killed pay-per-view, it never did. That was the three-way. After that, it was supposed to happen in the following weeks, never did. It was supposed to happen at Survival Instinct, well, we were both dealing with Flair and his crew, never did. It was supposed to happen at the premiere edition of the third season, never did because of your injury. Now finally it is happening at Ignition for God's sakes. But this time around I'm gonna ask you. I've been waiting for you, well, at this time for 19 weeks. I've been waiting for a one-on-one -on -one championship match for 19 weeks as this very moment at Ignition it is gonna complete 20 weeks. 20 weeks for a one-on-one -on -one championship match. A deserved championship match. Because I left with no option. And the former champion always deserve a rematch clause. So do you think, Billy Ray, the fact of me waiting for about 20 weeks is just going to lead both of us to ignition on a normal singles match? Do you think that's fair? Think for a second. 20 weeks? I've been waiting 20, 20 weeks to have a, a championship match, a singles match? Oh man, that is not going to happen. That is not going to happen because I'm demanding you to have a stipulation to that battle right here, right now. You're demanding me, Bruce? You don't have power to demand anything. As far as I'm concerned, you're not even the general manager. But if you want to demand anything, you're going to demand something to, to your wife. Because it felt like you like to demand things from other people. But when I talked to your wife back in the day, she said that she was the only one demanding action from you. Proper action in bed. Ooh, hold on, hold on, people, hold on. Bruce Banner, so you know I never back down from a fight. You came down here talking about the fact that I'm only defending the PWC World Championship once in a month just because I didn't want to face it before you. That's not about it, you see. If you want to face me right here, right now, even before Ignition, we can do it right here, right now. We don't have to wait for Ignition. And here comes Tyson Kill. Oh, hold on, guys. Tonight we don't have time for another match. And Ignition sounds good for a pay-per-view to have both of you in the ring. But like Bruce Bannister was saying, feels like he really wants to add a special stipulation to that match. 
And it feels like Billy Ray is not backing down. So Bruce Bannister, since you're always looking like a crybaby, I'm gonna give you the opportunity to rightfully pick up the stipulation you want. Whatever you want, say it. Alright. Our match at Ignition Billy Ray will be under last man standing rules. You got that? Now let's go back to the ringside because Raven is going to have his match of preparation for Ignition against Scott Norton. But what, what, what the hell is going on there? Scott Norton, that's a rat. I think that's Scott, I think that's Scott Norton himself. Yeah, that's him. That's not just a wrestler. That, that's Scott Norton. Scott, Scott Norton is being dragged across the floor, being held by an arm totally unconscious for a match after being attacked on backstage. But if, as you can see, the man who attacked him has his face covered with a sock. And he's bringing him towards the ring. What the hell? Well, and it feels like Raven is going to fight the unconscious Scott Norton here. Here we go, guys. Extreme Rules action coming up. Right to the back of the neck. Oh, look at it. Pow, what a shot. Man, what a clothesline. Ooh, what impact. Ooh! Finds a way to reverse. Oh, again! from the suplex. It's not looking good for him here. He's got to get out of that corner. Teeing off. 
In this type of match, Byron, how does a superstar combat against the fact that they could fall victim to a vicious and hellacious attack? Well, the difficult part is once an opponent gets the upper hand, and you have to stop the onslaught yourself. There are no rope breaks, no five counts. Now, the referee is truly only there to count pinfall attempts and check to see if a combatant submits. What a discus clothesline! He's ex Wicked body shot. Got him hooked. DDT! Now's the time to capitalize. Let's look at this again. It changed the entire complexion of this match. Boom! <laughs> Looking for all the glory here. It's over. It's all. Well, and ladies and gentlemen, the match got over. Raven got the victory. Even though it was a very disadvantaged match for the side of Scott Norton because he was attacked somewhere in the backstage. And now, wait a minute. The guy on the entrance stage who was watching this match all along with the suck on his head covering his face. The man who attacked Scott Norton on the back. No way, that's. He's taking the sock away. That's Vampiro. What I don't understand is why Vampiro helped out Raven since they are facing each other next week in a graveyard match as we all know. What the? Is he playing, is he playing mind games with Raven? Well, next week these two are gonna collide as you know in a graveyard match. However, let me tell you, it is a bit different from a traditional buried alive match. In graveyard matches, it is just a normal singles match, pinfall or submission match where the loser is gonna get buried alive, but that's after the match. That doesn't count as a way of winning. The only way of winning is by pinfall or submission, as normal. Ladies and gentlemen, we're here back in PWC, and now we're gonna have a Cruiserweights match. However, there was a replacement, but apparently there is no reason for that replacement. As far as this moment goes, it was supposed to be Rey Mysterio Jr. against Chavo Guerrero, but it ended up being Rey Mysterio against Billy Kidman. So now let's go back to the ring. I think I can safely speak for many when I say it's so great to see the Cruiserweight Championship defended on WWE television once again. Heads for the top rope. Oh, he's in trouble now. Look out below. Look out. WWE fans watching this match all around the world. We want to say hi to them, all the countries, even Manila, where I use their envelopes. Manila's not a country. Just cutting off oxygen inflicts serious damage to an opponent. Hey, you could have until the referee's five count to break it. Use it. It's going to take a lot to change the tide of this one. What an assault. This type of attack takes things to a completely different level and leaves your opponent agonizing to breathe. We're coming to you from Las Vegas, and I'm a little shocked to report that I still have some money in my pocket. There may be no stopping him. We're coming to you from Las Vegas, and I'm a little shocked to report that I still have some money in my pocket. There's the pan. Ken is upon a kick out. It's over. It's all over. Here's your winner and the new... He gets...
gets out of trouble there. Oh my God, his body's been through hell, and his ribs have bore the brunt of the attack. And I hope we can get a doctor out here as a precaution. Damaged ribs like that can make it hard to breathe. It looks like we're going to see what kind of pain they can inflict out here on the floor. This guy's a machine. How are these guys do with absorbing the punishment they're about to receive out here? He saw that one coming. The unorthodox offense. I don't know if I'd say that's unorthodox as much as it is innovative. How much more? How much more are you willing to pay to win this match? Off the top rope. Well, he was able to reverse it and get out of that. Really pushing his opponent to the limit here. A textbook reversal. Can he follow up? He's too good inside the ring to be out on the floor for long. Getting back into the ring now. Oh, his body has to be broken right now. The Woods calling. Somebody's about to go through the table. Oh, Lord, this is going to be ugly. He's taking some offense, but he's not appearing too worse for wear, at least not yet anyway. I don't know. This appears to be nothing more than a little stumble along the way. Oh, man. At this point, he might want to think about adopting a new finisher. He certainly hasn't finished anything here tonight. This table match and its carnage is over. Ladies and gentlemen, we're here back in PWC. But right now, let's put the cameras on the back. Because apparently there is AC3, Shagan, and someone else that I don't really know the name. Let's put the cameras right there. <laughs> I don't get it, AC3. A couple of weeks ago, you told me, Bros first, business first, ladies after. You did such a an horrific situation out of what happened with Lucia. And now you're coming down here with a girl that looks like a 2000s version of Marilyn Monroe. What about what you said to me? Next week we're going to have our PWC Tag Team title shot. Against the Hardy Boys. And now you're bringing some new girl to the picture? Relax, Shagan. Okay? We're gonna think, we're gonna work things out. You don't really have to worry about it. We don't really have to worry about it, okay? There is a difference between you and me. The difference is this girl right here, she's not first. I'm focused on winning the titles alongside with you. She's gonna be on my bedroom right after we win the tag team belts. So rest, rest, Shagan. She's not going to get in the way of our business.
Thank you, take her. Thank you, take her. As if the night's episode wasn't emotional enough for three straight decades, I've worn that jacket and put that Stenson hat. I've made that slow walk towards the ring, and I think it's safe to say that some entrances I've done were longer than some of my matches. And I have claimed soul after soul after soul after soul. But even the Reaper must know when the weight of the stick takes its toll. And so it is now time for the Reaper and for all of those who have fallen to finally rest in peace. Thank you, Taker. Thank you, Taker. The Reaper goes to rest, but this spirit lives internally. That's why starting next week, my son Erebus will be the one to step in here and entertain each and every single one of you, making sure that the legend of the Undertaker doesn't die. Yeah, Erebus, Erebus. He's young, still has a lot to learn, but I'm okay with that because watching over him will be my brother, the Big Red Machine. Kane. Before we close the chapter of my career for good, I just want to say thank you. Thank you to Trish. Thank you to Tyson, who granted me an opportunity to mesmerize you for the last time. Thank you to Vince and to the WWE for making me who I am. Yeah. Thank you to Paul Bearer for everything he did for my career. Whatever standing by my side or fighting against me. Thank you, Taker. Thank you, Taker. Thank you to Sting for providing me the best send-off I could ask for. Well, and now Taker is shaking hands with Sting and they hug. And most importantly, thank you to every single one of you. Who for the last 33, 32 years, I believe, yeah, 32 years, believed in every aspect of the Undertaker's mystic and made the dead man character truly larger than life. Thank you very much and never say never. Well, the dead man makes his celebratory knee pose, the arena goes dark and when, wait a minute, the lights have gone out. Now the lights are coming back, the head the jacket that are placed in the middle of the ring. Undertaker has gone already. What a way to say goodbye by such a legend like the Undertaker. Thank you, Taker. Thank you, Taker. Thank you, Taker. Welcome, Erebus. Welcome, Erebus. Welcome, Erebus. What an emotional show we have had here tonight. The Hannah Kimura and Chad Gaspar Memorial Edition. The go home details the ignition and the end of an Emperor Peril career. And the passing of the torch. Erebus, you better than anyone can describe the myriad of emotions you felt during tonight's very special edition. That was only dedicated to Shad and Anta, but also served as the last era for your dad, right? The fact is, I am still at a loss for words. I mean, my plan, my destiny in life was never to be a wrestler, but when I saw the fans, the people cherishing the Undertaker's one-of-a-kind legacy, especially in the later years, when things didn't go that well, well, when it comes to the performance and his physical condition, I took it upon myself to try to preserve and carry on his legacy, and I asked Triple H, Shawn Michaels and Kurt Angle to train me. Now I know I will never be off the character and off the rest of my dad was, because there is only one Undertaker. But why should I be concerned with being the next Undertaker when I can be the one and only Herobus? 
Speaking of being the one and only, your debut match is set for the pay-per-view next Thursday. And per advice of your dad, you've got your uncle Kane accompanying you to the ringside. How does it feel to debut as a pay-per-view to have one of the greatest of all time watching your back? And what are the expectations regarding your own career? I mean, it's completely different. It's a completely different world from now on. And it's only gonna get worse. <laughs> I used to watch my father on TV and I always thought, damn, he worked so hard for that. And he did. Sure he did, Erebus. Yeah, he truly did. Actually, he outdid himself. But more than working hard, I gotta search for the luck that's needed nowadays. Because the roster is stacked, we're dealing with lots of potential, so luck is an essential part of the game. Well, Ken, accompanying me, it can bring me comfort. But it actually brings me a lot of responsibility because it's like I'm being evaluated, you know, by a professional, like a really true meaning professional, hell of a wrestler. And when you have one of the goats watching every step you do in a ring, you can only expect to do well. As far as expectation goes, kick ass, take names, take souls, and dig even more holes. And of course, ascend to the top of the mountain. Starting next week, everyone's gonna know. What him embrace yourself. Dead man ink is open for business. Well, Erebus, thank you very much. Happy retirement for The Undertaker and wishing you the best look in your career. Thank you. I really appreciate it. On the aftermath of a very emotional Shad Gaspar and Hannah Kimura memorial show, here we stand with Julia, Siori and Hannah's mother, Joshi wrestling legend Kyoko Kimura, as we now look forward to a spectacular pay-per-view, Ignition, coming down next week. But before we all full turn our eyes to the pay-per-view itself, I gotta ask you Kyoko, how much did it mean to you to be here remembering the life and the legacy of your daughter? そうはなかったかわたしのもすむ。思い出すとためにしょ、おせせがたこと、わたしにとてせかい、おいみしましたかのじょはおんとにびじぬぞでもともあまいこころのいとりでだりかのじょのきやらわだんたんまでししたかあ